This is an addendum to the 562 build. And so I decided to tear this apart after it had a little bit of time on it. Got a couple of tangs, a couple of days. And this was the one we put a pop-up in there. First, you know I keep talking about what I use for mixture, for fuel, 32 to 1 and all that. And I've said over and over again how uh, when I tear things down it's really nice to see that nice film of, of oil on everything. Well here's case in point. Pretty much everywhere. And the second thing is, you know, there's this uh, discussion on whether or not 1194 gaskets are a viable option on things like this. And I had to pull this one off. It didn't come off easy. And pretty much it stuck. Pretty much everywhere. And what didn't stick on the on the cylinder stuck on the uh, well I guess if you look closely you can see where it pretty much had bonded to every every place where I had put it so I didn't have a gasket failure as far as the build is concerned the pop-up in the muffler mod yeah I mean it, it made a little difference it, it wasn't earth shattering you know I, I think it falls into the same kind of category as when I just finished doing that MS660 with a cleaned up cylinder and a muffler mod where on say um, 15 seconds you might see a one second difference. I'd say that's kind of the class of change you see here and you can argue if you have two saws side by side is that chain or is that modification. I would say on this um, you feel a little more Pork. I mean, I'm going to say that subjectively. Um, is the difference earth shattering? No. Is it noticeable? Yeah. But you pretty much have to have the saws side by side to, to see that. You'd have to have them either side by side or do what I do. And that's uh, use a, my video editor as a time clock. And it takes the subjective and makes it uh, quantitative. So Now, there's another thing. And I actually did fall into this category here. And I didn't think I did it first, but I realized I did. And that is the cases when you put the cylinder on without a base gasket will interfere with those two things. Now, fortunately for me, um, the goo gasket, the, the 1184, was able to seal anyway. But had I not used 1194, if I would used a lesser product, my guess is that that saw would have been sucking some air. You know, mine didn't show any signs of it. And uh, it looks to be like it's sealed anyway. But I think that's something we have to consider if you take this kind of a modification route. And it's removing just a little bit of material right there where those uh, caps for the transfer ports interfere just slightly with the cases. So anyway, that's an update. Um, this one's going to go from a EL46 to an EL48 carburetor, and it's funny because uh, actually, um, at this point in my skill set, it's actually easier to change that carburetor with a cylinder off than it is with it on. Going to make another short video. Um, this is another Harbor Freight Saves the Day video. And that is, I had to buy this uh, blind hole bearing puller set from Harbor Freight. The model number is 95987. And what it basically is, it has these uh, devices right here where when you turn that in, you see how these spread? They grab on the inside of the bearing, whatever it is you're trying to pull, and then you attach this to the slide hammer and, and, and take out the bearing. That's what it looks like. I just by hand have got that turned in there and it's up, it's up pretty tight. So at this point I'll, I'll put on the slide hammer. I'm not going to do it right now because I have to heat things up. 
and the slide hammer attaches there. And then once I have that stabilized, you take the slide hammer and, and take the bearing out. Um, I don't know. I'm going to do that in a couple of minutes. But basically what I've been seeing is on these X torques is the clutch side bearing goes and the common denominator to this point in time is that those clutch side bearings were these nylon caged bearings and what that means is that little structure on the inside of that bearing which holds the balls apart is a nylon structure versus a steel cage um, you know I went and bought other brands I've got Natchez and usually you can get them for reasonable on uh, eBay, you know, reasonable amount of money on eBay. And I've got these uh, NSKs, and they look really nice. Um, and that's what I'm going to put in my customer saws, is this brand right here. And the reason is, is I can get them locally. There's a shop down in the Binghamton area, actually it's in Vestal, New York. And... Uh, That's their name, Cayman, and they're on uh, 423 Commerce Road, Vestal, New York. And uh, there's a variety of different places around the country that's not just one. They're, they're sort of an industrial supply, but they get the SKF brand and the uh, NSK brand bearings. So it says USA on them. doesn't mean they're made there, but it's definitely a higher quality bearing. And that's what I'm going to be using on these saws. So those are two little details. And I guess what I'm going to do now is take these two cases and heat them up. And then try to slide hammer out those bearings. And then I'll show you the results. I have chainsaws. My wife has that kind of saw. We're doing a lot of construction in the house. and She likes working with that kind of thing. But... Since it's there, and I'm going to take a target of opportunity and see if I can't use that stand to slide hammer out those bearings. Well, that was easier than I thought. I actually uh, just warmed it up with a propane torch and just held it with one hand and slid out the other one about four or five taps later. There it is. Get this one off of here. That's one down. Now, a sane person would have a wrench, but I'm kind of excited. I just got this damn thing home, and I'm wanting to see if I can make it work. This is not exactly optimal. I'm going to give it a little bit of heat. And... Maybe it'll come a little faster. Caught it. Like I said, it's not optimal, but there you go. I don't recommend doing it the way I just did it on a table like this, but like I said, I was pretty excited about the tool. I nearly sent that case right through the window. Can you imagine me trying to explain that to my wife? So, but again, you can see how this works. Very, very handy. Um, I usually use something other than a propane torch. This is what I use to start my fire with, it's what I had local right with me so that's what I use. Usually I use a heat gun. I don't like using flames on anything that might be magnesium. It's just a phobia I have. So <laughs> definitely bush league what I just did there but it makes for good video. Um, so now I've got both my x torque cases with those bearings 
those races pulled out of there. See that works, isn't that cool? And these are the two that just came out. And these are the two nylons. They were the same. But these are the ones from the from the uh, flywheel side. And like I said, I'm going to replace them with all my customer saws with these NSKs. Oh, and this one right here, um, I'm going to start putting these in the bottom end of my uh, my uh, Farmer Tech steels. And the next set of Farmer Techs are going to have these our 6203s in there. I think that's going to be a nice upgrade to them. And so that's blind hole bearing puller kit from Harbor Freight, $75. Um, obviously something you want to have if you're going to play this game. Now this right here is cool. Uh, I'm just going to tell you what it is right now. But it became apparent to me that I was going to have to start pulling apart a fair number of, of uh, the, the 562 Husqvarna's. So I went off and bought this from, it's a Husqvarna shop tool. And this is a, a case splitting tool. You know, instead of the big C-clamp that I use on the, on the 372 series, this is the kind of thing you have to have for the 562s. These really aren't that expensive, like 50 bucks maybe, 60 bucks. But again, if it's going to be a, a saw that you plan to work on, um, highly recommend getting one of those. So. I've got two projects going. One of these is going to be a new old top end, and the other is going to be a Hudsel aftermarket top end, both X Torques. That's what these two saws are going to be. And I know there's going to be all kinds of hue and cry, but that's what I want to do. While we're doing a little bit of show and tell, um, I guess there's two things that came to my mind. One is on the one that's getting an aftermarket top end. I'm also going to build it up with aftermarket plastic. This handle here is one that I recently got from Hudsel. And I don't know if you follow my series, but the first one I got from them was pretty crude. This was much more square. The uh, throttle cable was more of like a wire wrap versus this plastic. And it had, uh, it had uh, two lines from the tank instead of just the one. This is a much nicer piece, and I can tell you also that where the last one had the wrong length anti-vibe, these are both the right length and they're quite a bit stiffer. So I have high hopes for this Hudsel handle. We'll find out, and I guess you'll find out right with me, because if I like it, you'll know. And if I don't, you're going to know too. The same for this. This is a Hudsel top cover. You know, that plastic, it's been sitting outside there in the garage, so it's cold. It's not brittle. It's actually got a little bit of weight to it. So, you know, functional parts. More Hudsel. That's a functional part as well. Um, while I'm here, one of the questions that gets asked pretty frequently is the difference between X-Torque and uh, the standard cases. Well, now that we have them apart, it might be easier to show that difference. That one over here. This is a standard 372 case, the old style. I've already put in a new bearing. Um, this one happens to have a, uh, a Natchi bearing. And of course, it's the one we just took apart. But look at that right there. Look at the distance from the top to the bottom of that versus here. Notice how much shorter the old style one is. Um, and that's because the flanges on the, on the X-Torque cylinders are quite a bit longer. That's what we mean by the flange. There's no way the X-Torque is going to fit on the old 
case is about 50 thousandths or more uh, shy right there. So you'd either have to trim the flange somewhat or you'd have to find a way of machining out some material here. Um, but there's also another very subtle difference. See right here, you have an additional amount of material versus the old style. So they've beefed it up in order to handle that extra deep recess in there. So that's the difference between the new style Husqvarna 372 X Torque cases and the old style. Now, if you order a replacement set of cases from Husqvarna, you're going to get these. You're not going to get these. And this is kind of a super set because you can certainly put a old style top end on this set of cases, but the converse is not true. Actually, I got a couple of top ends I can show you. This might make a little more clear. I'm getting cluttered here on my, my desk. Got to be smarter than the box. Ah, here we go. Two brand new. OEM top ends. Here's the original style 50 millimeter 372 and you can see right on the top it's marked 50 and it has the right brand name there. I don't know if you pronounce that Maul or Maley um, but you see how that skirt is and on the old style cases how that fits and obviously on the new style cases there's more than enough room for that you can see how that fits there's the new one it's a new X torque top end much longer flange and there's really no way that that's gonna there's no way that that's going to fit in, in the old style cases. It just hits too soon. And obviously it fits in the new style. And to those who haven't already seen this, interestingly enough, I noticed they come, the extra come with a, a plug for the decomp. That's telling, guys. But I'm not going to tell you what that is there's a reason for it. And to those who have not gone through it, X-Torque, original, all different. Notice that their transfers have these caps on the X-Torque, not in the old style. But what the biggest difference is, is look at the intakes, just radically different. Now, to those observant ones, you'll also notice that the X-Torque is quite a bit taller. And I've gone through this in some of the prior videos. But the top plastic for the x torques are also taller to accommodate that larger cylinder. Which means this kind of stuff right here, this aftermarket for the old style uh, 372s will not work on an x torque Little detail. So anyway... Enough show and tell for today. I'm going to wrap it up and put together a video if I can upload it. It should be pretty short. Trying to keep it under 10 minutes. So.